today is also a yard site, which I would like to dedicate this study for a special man. His name is Arab Shalom Noach Ben Arab Moshe Abraham Brzovsky, the late Grand Hasidic Rebbe Slonim Hasidic Rebbe. I have the privilege to know him in person for numerous occasions that I met him. My brother, the Rosh Hashiva, has the privilege to marry his granddaughter. And he wrote extensively. One of them is, uh, hopefully we put it in a separate file, is a quotation from one of his books, Netivot Shalom. And while I was in Israel last week, my nephew told me, it was Friday night that married just a couple of months and he went to the Hasidic Tish, which is Hasidim get together on Friday night and um, and they came back home late in the evening and he and his newly wife uh, unfortunately found out that there's a thief came in and stole everything all the silver um, um, the candlesticks uh, kiddush cup and more and for a moment he was broken hearted, but then his wife pointed out the quotation which applied to the great Slonim Rebbe, um, that today is his Yorzai, speak about faith, that nothing happened in this world for no reason, and everything is from Hashem and for reason. So that's give us a lot of strength, and may his memory will be a great schut. Today is a very special day, is the Yorzai this day. Uh, Memorial Day for the late Rabbi Brazovsky, the Slonim Rebbe, the Grand Rebbe of the Hasidic sect of Slonim. He wrote extensively. One of his books is uh, one, one of the famous books. It's called Netivot Shalom. Let me share with you in his memory of today several quotations from his writing. Here you see, and I translate for it's written in Hebrew, Ha'isha Yudi a fellow Jew that merited that his faith is clear and bright. His level of faith is in a, in a highest, in a very special level, because all of his behavior, trait, and manner, and especially his attitude to his daily mundane events carry a different meaning. A person who has a real faith in the deepest level, he is not afraid from any material failure because he knew that everything happened with a private um, um, divine providence, hashgacha pratit, that watching over, over every single action and he should not feel frightened over anyone. He should not become a psychophant, uh, run after people, because he knew deep and deep in his heart, since he carried a highest level of faith, that all the king of East and West cannot do anything for him or her if from heaven they not entitled that to be his or her. And the same manner is the opposite. No one single person cannot reduce or take away whatever Hashem, the Almighty God, wants to give him. Meaning, the act of faith in the highest level is believing that anything and everything happened for reason and there is Hashem. He should, he should not be afraid from anything. Because he followed the Tehillim, Psalm 23. Even I go through the uh, valley of the shadow of death, I will fear not because you are with me. Because there is no evil come out of heaven. And all is from his compassionate Father in heaven, who intend to do good. And anything that looks like a bitter, it uh, has a purpose that comes from the good of Hashem and he should know how to digest 
all this happening with knowledge that it's good for him. Third paragraph, he always live with God as part of his life. He communicate with God all the time. He have the faith in God all the time. And therefore he merited that he fulfilled what God intend to have in his destiny, as it's written by the righteous sages on the line in the Torah, that the Almighty God is with you, you do not miss anything in your life, because since you know deep in your heart that the Almighty God is with you, therefore nothing is luck in your life. Everything is there for the house of the Lord, and always there is a divine providence in a personal level that watch over, over him all the times. Last paragraph. And its fulfillment, it will be fulfilled. Um, um, the line that is written on behalf of great Rabbi Menachem Mendel of Vetvisk, which was a great Hasidic Rebbe, that the faith in Hashem purified his neshama, his soul, and his soul purified in all different manners and as it said in a book called Maor Anaim and it said as follows all is accordance to a person faith then he will merit to, to receive according to uh, his faith his level regardless to uh, seeing the future seeing the hidden light um, and all the having the divine providence within his heart it's all related to the sentence that Torah that said that God is dwell upon them. So he says, praiseworthy to a person who get the strength every single person, every moment, in have, he having a f complete and full faith in simple, in the correct manner. So again, this is his book called Netivot Shalom. The Ma'amara uh, Emunah, that's the, the title of, of that is, uh, um, chapter and may it will be for his hood for his memory today it's his your side harav shalom noach ben harav moshe avraham brazovsky the rosh yeshiva of slonim and the late uh, hasidic grand hasidic rebbe may he will be our lobbyist our for good and for all of us amen amen here we are the eve of Tisha B'Av, the longest rabbinic fast day of 9 of Av, and how appropriate it is that we're about to study a page 26 in Tractate Psachim, the dealing specifically with Beit HaMikdash, with the Holy Temple, speedily will be rebuilt. Amen. Amen. We're going to study today a lot of subjects. The key point, we start with the Beit HaMikdash. We're going to speak about the Temple and certain Hana'a, certain use of the Beit HaMikdash for certain purposes. And uh, uh, hopefully with speedy um, rebuild. Also, we're going to speak about um, the subject of um, um, uh, Egla, um, um, the red heifer, which is part of the ritual of Beit HaMikdash, and uh, we're going to explain in what condition and where uh, they can use, but in general it will be a lot of involvement with the um, subject of Hana'a, deriving benefit for something that is sanctified for the Beit HaMikdash. Again, we are on page 26, Tractate Psachim. Three lines from Top of Kavav, Amar Abayei Mena Aminala. Here we talk about the Hechal, the Hechal meaning the sanctuary of the Beit Hamikdash. The Mishnah in Tractate Midot tells us the sanctuary um, during the era of the second um, um, uh, Beit Hamikdash. Um, it was a Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. So the Tanya Amru Alav Al Rabbi Yochanan Zakkai Shal Yosef B'Tzilo Shel Echal V'Doresh Kol Olam Kulo. Rabbi Yochanan Zakkai lived during the era of the Second Beit Hamikdash, especially the time of the destruction. The first Beit Hamikdash they have uh, heights of thirty amah, 
uh, of the sanctuary, the second Beit HaMikdash, they have much higher. It was about 100 cubits high, which is gorgeous, beautiful. About, um, in our measurement, is like 60 meter. And it's all around that area. So here it happens, they have to do Hilchot Chag Bachag. They have to teach the Alachot of upcoming festival before the festival. So imagine a picture. You have the leader of Rabbi Yochan ben Zakai who needs to teach all the preparation for the holidays and they need to designate a place for him to do it. Now, in one hand, they put a place close to the Temple Mount, close, close to Harbait, that everyone come there and he deliver his public uh, auditor, public uh, speech. However, in a way he enjoyed the tzel, the shade that come from Harabai. And now, the, according to what we understand, we are forbidden to derive any joy from the, something that is sanctified. Take, for example, Kohen. If the Kohen is not in his time of, he is not in his shift. So the priest, the Kohen, not allowed to derive any joy, not allowed to be there if it's not his shift, his turn. It reminds me in a way those who serve in the in a special forces. So you know that there are certain areas you need to have a certain classification in order to be there. Those who have a highest level of classified, they have a certain area they're allowed to, etc., etc. So the Havdil, the Kohen, not allowed to drive any benefit, joy, or be there if it's not in the service. So here you see the situation of Rabbi Yochan ben Zakai that he set in that area and he enjoy part of the sanctuary. So that's basically um, the way that Abaye said. What we said yesterday, we said that sometimes a person does something but it wasn't um, in full intent and vice mm -hmm. versa. We explained the story of Thailand, if you remember. Mm -hmm. So the, the person does things, so he said, Rabbi Yuda, what we understand, Rabbi Yuda said that if it wasn't in his intent and it happens, so it's okay. The Rava Amar Shani Eichal Latot Asui. So it means the, the sanctuary, the, the driving benefit is very, very different. Why? Because the key purpose of the sanctuary is to observe what is there. So um, it's not only uh, to bring a shed to people who are outside. Uh, so it means that what Rabbi Yocham ben Zakai have here is driving benefit not in the regular manner. It's an unusual way. So therefore he holds that that's okay. That's basically the way that Tosfot, uh, Tosfot Rashba and Rashid said. Now. There is a second version that said as follows, How do you know that Rabbi Yudah also forbid in that circumstance that none? We learn in Mishnah Tracted Midor, chapter 4. Okay. You have a building. Those of you are familiar with constructions or building or we have here the president of the shul, right? Sometimes you have all kind of renovations that needs to take place. You have here a building. Uh, the building of Beit HaMikdash, as you know, the, the, the second Beit HaMikdash was 420 years. So you, you have some, obviously, a maintenance issue from time to time. How you handle those maintenance issues? If you talk about Kodesh HaKodashim, the Holy of Holies, the, even the high priest allowed to go there on Yom Kippur twice, that's it. But other than that, no one allowed to go there. Now you have now those um, contractors that need to go there to do all kind of repair. How they do that? So they said those who married to those contractor, they made for them a special, um, some type of tunnels mm -hmm. that go to the roof. It's like in our language, I think the right word is chimney or something like that. They chimney, come, uh, they use hatches here. Hatches. Mm -hmm. And they basically cannot see, cannot derive joy or see mm -hmm. those beauty of the Holy of Holies. 
They go, they do the job, and that's the way they get in and out. So here, the haha, and here you see, the lo efshav ve asu, because they cannot go there and fix whatever needs to be fixed, and therefore you need to use that that term, that chimney or whatever it is, to, mm-hmm. to have them there, so you derive from that that it's still forbidden if lo efshav u mechaven at intent v'tizbera, he says, is that true that those um, contractors um, cannot derive any joy from the Beit HaMikdash? V'amar Rabbi Shimon ben Pazi, Amar Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi, Mishum Bar Kapa, Kol umar'e v'reach en ba'i Mishum Meila. He said that if you hear the sound of the instrument in Beit HaMikdash, or the, the, the beauty of Beit HaMikdash, or the smell of the incense, or uh, all these things that is a uh, uh, sanctified, so it's not considering even those instruments themselves carry uh, kedusha and they have all the halachot of meila. But according to the Torah, we can derive joy from that sound, from that appearance, from that smells, because Rashi call it en bahem mamash. That is not something that it's. Um, you use. It's not, it's just you hear, you smell, but it's not something that you use for that purpose. So you say, you, you see here that it's not a biblical uh, concern. So why, if that's the case, the rabbis require those con- con- construction people to bother to go in that way in order to fix things. So they said, Elam ma'ala su bebeit kodesh kodashim. You have to say that the rabbi is making an exception for the Beit Hamidash, for the Kodesh HaKodashim, for the Holy of Holies, that they made it in a such a way, because it's carrying an extra Kedusha, that um, um, they made it for them. But you cannot derive any learning or any juxtaposition to our discussion here. Ikhade Amri, another option. Amarava menam inalei, how do you know that lo yafshar v'kamechaven, it's forbidden even according to Rabbi Yehuda. The Tanya, Oma Rabbi Shimon ben Pazi, Oma Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi, Mishum Bar Kapara. Rabbi Bar Kapara was a student of Rabbi. So they said, Kol umar evereach, voice and appearance and smell of Hegdesh, if someone derived joy from them, and by Mishum Mila, it's not considering any type of misuse of consecrated items so it means me'ila u deleika that you don't have any joy, any benefit from that voice, appearance or smell ha isura ika but prohibition you have here my love leotana on dim befnim that's applied to those kohanim and leviyim that it's inside the, the Azara, inside, in order to serve the Beit HaMikdash. Why? De lo efshar v'kamechaven ve'asu. Because you cannot avoid from standing there. So therefore, it's forbidden for them to derive any joy from that, that voice, smell, or, or appearance of Beit HaMikdash. So Abaye said, lo, bar kapara meant, Leotan haundim bachutz, people who stand outside and you can avoid them from coming close contact to the Beit Hamikdash, so they they have the prohibition against coming close and have the intent to derive joy from that voice, from that smell, from that appearance of Beit Hamikdash, because it's considered efshar komechaven. I give you an example. Imagine that sometimes um, you have. A, on Shabbat for example if you go to Eretz Israel and it's mainly by the fellow Jews and you have the radio um, performs uh, music and you like very much that music and you come in close to hear it and you may say look I didn't turn on anything I didn't do anything but it was turned and you derive joy which is forbidden for you that's the same manner so now back to Gufa, we approach 
to go to the halacha, and we said, Oma Rabbi Shimon ben Pazi, Oma Rabbi Shimon ben Levi, Mishum Bar Kapara, Kolu Mare Vereach, Ein Bayi Mishum Meila. He said that the sound of musical instruments in the Beit Hamikdash, and the sight and the smell of incense, are not subject to the prohibition of misuse of consecrated property. So they said. <coughs> The Gemara asks, V'reach en bo mishum meila? Are you going to tell me the smell? It's not considering any misuse of property. V'atanya mefatem et haktoret li'itlamed ba omosra la tzibu. If someone um, uh, use, prepare the incense mixture in order to teach himself how to prepare it or to transfer it to the community in order to exempt from punishment. So he says, Patu, he is exempt from, uh, from punishment. But Leariachba, but if he did it in order to smell it, Chayav. So he is liable to receive karet. Now, Vameriachba Patu, Ela Shemaal. And one who's actually smelled the incense mixture is exempt from punishment of karet and from bringing a sin offering, however, he has misused the consecrated property. So apparently the halacha of misused consecrated property applies to smelling. Elo Amar of Papa. Papa said, that's the meaning of Bar Kapara. Kol umar e ain't by mishum mila. He said, the, the sound and the appearance it's not considering a misuse of consecrated property. Lefisha ain't by mamash because there is no substance. It's just smell. Even the truth is the incense they have some type of meila uh, because they still carry something. So you can say that it's different between hearing and smelling. וריח לאחר שתעלה תמרותו אין בו בשום מעילה משאול ונעשה מצוותו. So the smell that is emitted after the flame catches the calm of smoke raises is not subject to the prohibition of misuse consecrated property since its mitzvah has already been performed. So it means Rabbah Kappa speaks about ktoret and incense after they, they make this mitzvah. So, again, when it's come to smell, you don't speak about me'ila, lememra, you mean to say, decholheicha denaasa mitzvato, ein bo mishum me'ila, that you mean to say that where its mitzvah has already been performed, the subject is not a subject to the prohibition of misuse, a consecrated property. Vareitu matadeshen, you have a daily removal of ashes. The naaset mitzvata, that you have the, the offering of the altar uh, occurs after the mitzvah has been pre- performed. The chtiv vesamor etzel amizbeach, because they said, and the priest shall put his lion garment, etc., etc., and he shall put them besides the altar. It means שלא יפזר וסמו שלא יענה which means that he may not scatter and he shall uh, put them indicates that one may not drive benefit from these ashes. So the Gemara responds משום דהבו תרומת הדשן ובגדי כהונה because the alachot of removal the ashes from the altar and of the priestly garments worn by the high priest on Yom Kippur are two verses that come as one. So therefore, the Shnei Ketuvim Abayim Ke'echad V'chol Shnei Ketuvim Abayim Ke'echad Nemelamdim You have here two verses that come as one and it does not teach a principle. So you learn from that the Halakha is stated twice with regard to two individual cases in the Torah. The understanding is that the halacha applies only to those cases. So we understand that the halacha applies to all other relevant cases as well. It will have been necessary for the Torah to teach twice. So the fact that two cases are mentioned indicates that there are 
the ex exception rather than the rule. So you have to know the Torah is very prudent in words. So if they say something once, fine, but if you repeat it, the same thing, they want to specify something, that they want to indicate that this is uh, specifically and is no exception. Tumat hadeshen had The removal of the ashes, that's the, what we said, that did not derive joy. Bigdei kuna, the garment of the priest, applied to the Kohen Gadol, the high priest on Yom Kippur, the Khtiv, the Torah said in Vaikra in Leviticus chapter 16, Venicham Sham, that the Kohen enter there and leave it there. So it means, Melamejet Unim Gniza, that you have to have Gniza, you have to bury. So you are forbidden to derive any benefit, even the mitzvah made by them doing the service of the Day of Atonement, of Yom Kippur. So that's Sham. The, the white garment of the, the high priest, they need to have geniza, they need to have a burial. They cannot use it, even not to another high priest in a different Yom Kippur. Cannot do it. And not the other regular Kohen for the rest of the year. So the minutes the mitzvah is completed, goodbye, it's, it's over. Ha Michale Rabbanan, we understand now by the sages Amrei Melamed Shetunim Gniza that they said that uh, that the teachers that they require burial. Ela le Rabbi Dosa de Paligalayu, but according to Rabbi Dosa they disagree with them. The Amar Avalu Yine Lechohen Ediot, but those white garments that the high priest used after Yom Kippur it's good for a regular Kohen. So you can use it for the all year around. Umayvini chamsham. So what does that mean that he left it there? Shelo yishtamesh b'hem b'yom kippur acher. That the Kohen Gadol not allowed to use them in a different Yom Kippur. Ma'ika lemeima. So what, what's the purpose of that? So why we don't learn from the removal of the ashes from Chumat Adeshen to other things that are consecrated, that uh, even they, they use even after you fulfill their mitzvah. So the Gemara responds, Mishum, the Havu, Trumat, Adeshen, Vegla, Rufa, Shnei Chtuvim, Abayim, Kechad. Vechol Shnei Chtuvim, Abayim, Kechad, En Melamdim. Remember the 13 principle of Rabbi Ishmael? Mm -hmm. So he said, the principle cannot be based on the verse because the removal of the ashes and the heifers whose neck is broken because the two verses that come as one and two verses that come as one do not teach a principle. So you see here for, for all the other Dinei uh, Torah. So the Torah tells us in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 21 the Torah said that if you found in Eretz Israel a dead body and it's outside of the city, and you don't know who is the one who in charge. So the, the, the judges of the Supreme Court needs to go there, and need to measure, etc. And they need to go there, and then they go to all this ritual. So they said that they slaughtered that Egla Arufa Sham in that location, and which means you need to bury Egla Arufa in that particular place. So you see here that there is a prohibition of Iswana in Hekdesh even after they make this mitzvah. So you see here, uh, Egla Rufa, it's basically an atonement, uh, but it's not applied to all these halachot of Meila. So they said, Hanicha leman de'amar el melamdim. We understand this according to one who said that it's not teaching a principle, which means according to the sages. So what we derive from that? Trey mi ute ktiv. You have here two exclusions. Ktiv v'samo uktiv arufa. One said he should put it, and the other said the heifer which had its neck uh, neck broken. So what we read, the word there indicates that Allah applies only to this type of heifer and does not any other animal case. Tashma. So now we go back to the Machlokit of Abai Verada. If um, he brought the heifer whose neck to be broken, or the red heifer, into a cow pen. So um, 
So the Tosfot explains that in those days they used to tie several animals together. You know that they, they use it together, that they use the word Rivka. And, and, uh, or Lerabka. And said, Ve Dasha Akshera. So this, this heifer does that together, uh, threshes grain while walking with the other cows, so it's still valid. Why? Because it's not intent, the owner not intent that they do some work. Now, Bishvil Shetinak Vetadush, Psula, but he saw it may be nursed from its mother, so it will thresh grain. It's disqualified from use in this ritual. So, even one of the purposes was for that purpose, for, for the nurse, it's considering a work, some type of work. So Tosfot said that you have, the, if you remember that uh, when we study Eruvin, you remember that picture 19 in Eruvin, that we have um, four animals, and Tosfot said even three animals, mm -hmm. he put them to that. Okay, so he said, Uktane mm Psula. -hmm. So you see that it's invalid for the mitzvah of Egla or Fashane Atam Dichtiv, they said in the Vorim, Deuteronomy 21, Asher lo ubadba, which is not being used for work. Mikol makom, which in any case, so therefore while the heifer is disqualified from use, even if the situation is unavoidable, so it's no general conclusion can be drawn from this case. Yache afilu reishanami. So if you tell me that that's making invalid in any way, so even the first part also, which means there is a, you do some work on that. So why the, the writer said here that, uh, that even when the, the, the threshers was grain, uh, uh, the grain against the will of the owner, it has still done work and should be rendered disqualified. So they said here, Halodamia Ela Leha. You divide between the first part and the second part. Because they said in Tractate Parat in, 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 as follows Shachena Leaof. If you have a main animal mounted on, the, on that, Kshira, it's still um, valid. Allah Lea Zachar Psula, but if is the ox come and have relation with her, so it makes it invalid. My tama, what's the reason? So, uh, Tosvot here explains, and he said, Vintum aramai psula, vadai lo nicha le lehafsid parash, lemei akirim bishvil tishtavar muat, veyash lomar, deim no mark shirai, aval nicha le lachen al achshira. Which means that you have here, a disha, so therefore he doesn't need the para. So the key point is this. If you talk about red heifer, there is no price for them. As you know, it's a rare commodity. You don't have it much. I assume you guys know what is the, how many para dumas we have in our history. Anybody knows? So the idea is, according to our tradition, it was only nine para dumas. Mm. One is in time of Moshe Rabbeinu, and, and, and eight during the era of the second Beit HaMikdash. It's only nine. Now imagine a story like Dama Benetina in the Gemara. You have a Parah Duma. So it's nothing, it's no price. Mm -hmm. Any price you sell, it's, 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 it has its value. It's, it's no limitation of price. Because mm -hmm. anything you sell, they buy. So um, um, what's the difference? Why does Amar of Papa Iktiv Avad, if the Torah said in the Vorim that it's not make a walk with that, Avad ad the Avid ba Ihu, until a person physically does some work with that. So he said, Iktiv Ubad, Vekarinan Avad, Vekarinan Ubad, which means we derive from that, Afilu Mimela Nami. Even they do some work that need atonements, uh, that that um, that um, the the the, um, the cow made, um, not by the owner. Nami, it's also make it invalid. Hashtag avad, 
that they, they use the word aval without vav, the karinan ubad, but according to our tradition we use the word ubad, ubad dumi de avad, ma avad de nichale af ubad de nichale, which means you say that they, they, the same way that, um, that the animal, the work of the animal is in a way that is beneficial to him, so the same thing, the animal becomes prohibited only when it works in a way that causes him to derive benefit from this labor. So consequently what we see from that, that it still may be used if a bird lands on it, because the owner does not derive benefit from this in any way. However, if a male bull mates with a heifer, it's rendered unfit since the owner generally has, has an interest in this occurring. So Tashma. So now we're bringing a Raya from a Braita. If someone, Hamotse Aveda, if someone found something, you found a garment or some. Imagine you found something expensive. So what happened is, you pulled it out, and you show off, and it's not used. So it's like almost gazelle. Why? Because you're driving benefit for something that it's not used. If he has some guests, so Rashi here used the word klomar, and I explained in my book what's the meaning, but anyway, לא ישתכנה לא על גבי מיטה ולא על גבי מגוד בין לצורך בין לצורך בין לצורך So if it happens that you have a guest so um, he may not spread it out he not take it for his own purpose so because if otherwise it's um, he is uh, some type of gazel some type of uh, join uh, something that not belongs to him so they said שנאתם דקללי so that uh, because they, they over there it's different, but the risk of damages either due to the uh, there is a different imishum eina bisha or imishum ganavi. So it's very interesting what the Gemara said that they said that um, either it's because there is a issue of uh, evil eye. It's a famous Gemara in Baba Metzia that said that in Peidale that um, there are some issue of um, people uh, get jealous mm -hmm. uh, and they create damage for a person. It's also early Baba Basra, they also the Gemara said it. Or because he's afraid of thieves, they're going to steal it. So it's prohibited because of the be benefit. Uh, um, uh, it's not because of benefit, it's because uh, that may be damage the item. So basically what you see here from all of that, that you cannot uh, bring that item, lost item, at the front of their eyes. Tashma, so now it's bringing uh, uh, proof from the Mishnah in Kilayim, chapter 9. Mochrek sut mochrim kedarkam. If someone um, uh, sell a clothing merchant that is selling diverse kind, he may sell them as a normal, uh, the usual manner. As long as it's not using this diverse kind, uh, the hot summer for the protection, or the same in the winter for sin, that's Nuim, and those who are very scrupulous not to enter the domain of sin, they, they put back this clothing um, and, and they don't wear it at all. So basically we rejected the whole uh, notion and he said that uh, it's conclusion, conclusion, conclusion refutation to the thought of the first version of the Rava statements, which means according to his version, one is prohibited from driving benefit when it's possible to avoid doing a, a so and he does not intend to drive benefit. So that's when he used the, the, the word Chuvta twice, it means that that's the final word and that's the bottom line. So now we go to practical alachot. We talked today about Isoyana, a different um, a prohibition of deriving benefit and driving uh, joy. So here are some examples. One, may, one who sits on the shade of the temple, of the Holy Beit HaMikdash, 
does not violate the prohibition of misuse the, of consecrated property, although he is driving benefit from it. That's the Rambam in Hilchot Meila, chapter 5. One should not derive benefit from the sounds of the, or the sight of the temple, Lechatchila. However, if he did drive benefit from the te- te- temple this way, he has not violated the prohibition of misuse, the consecrated property. And we explain the way in our shiur about Beit HaMikdash, how those contractors uh, used to do uh, some repair when it's needed. Also, we're talking about preparation of the incense, the ktoret. One who prepared the incense with the correct spices and in the exact proportions in order to smell it is liable to receive karet. If, it is not, if this is unwittingly, he must bring a sin offering. If he prepare it in order to practice mixing it properly or transfer it to the public, which is to the temple, is exempt. Um, uh, this is Ramba Milchot Klea Mikdash, chapter 2. One who smells the incense in the temple is not punished in the same way that he was prepared for uh, it for himself, although he is liable to receive punishment for misuse of consecrated property. We talk about the one who smells the incense after the pillar of smoke has risen is exempt. He smelled before this point is liable to receive the punishment of misuse, a consecrated property. We're talking a removal of the ashes, the trumata deshen, and we said it is prohibited to drive benefit from the ash removed from the altar, even after its mitzvah has been completed. That's the Rambam, Ilchot Tmidinu Mosafin, chapter 2. Um, we talk about um, sh- um, bird landed in the red heifer. So he said that uh, it's still valid. However, if the male mountain, the mate, it's unfit. <coughs> this is important halacha. Shimush ba'aveida. So here we talk about a use of a lost object. Listen carefully. It is prohibited for one who finds a lost object to use it even to spread it out for his own purposes. However, if he must spread out the garment in order to preserve it, then it is permitted to do so, provided that it's done when no guests are present. That's a Shulchan Or, Choshen Mishpat, 267. Now, tomorrow in Mitzvah Shem, we'll continue several halachot. We're going to speak about Isurana, and we're going to speak not only in Isurana and Beit HaMikdash, but in general Isurana as well.